Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Pizza, pierogies, politics, and punches. That's what went down in Shelby Township last night, according to police at a GOP delegate event. It is a bizarre assault captured on video, which has been turned over to police. And it has the Macomb County Prosecutor's Office authorizing charges against, against a man who not only dabbles in politics, but is also well known for running the Sterling Civic Theater. Uh, Mara McDonald, live in Shelby Township, with more on what happened here. Mara. Devin, well, it started allegedly with an ethnic slur, then a roundhouse punch and ended with a warrant. Take a listen. What started out as pizza pierogies and politics for Macomb GOP delegates ended with punches being thrown at the Palazzo Grande. And the man accused of throwing those punches, Larry O'Grady, not only works as a GOP consultant, but has spent years as the head of the Sterling Civic Theater and is known as an advocate for children with disabilities. The victim in all of this, who doesn't want to be identified, spoke with us on the phone tonight. I was just at the bar grabbing a Coke. He was pressing the bartender to overserve him, and the bartender kept refusing. He actually cut right in front of me, and he says, are you buying? And I said, sure, whoever's next to me, I'm a friendly guy. Yeah, I'll, I'll buy a drink for anybody. I don't care. And um, he said, uh, oh, you are? I, I, he goes, I won't take a drink from a dirty I said, okay, that's no problem. And then five seconds later, he's, he's, he's pushing his nose into my nose, and threatening to kill me and uh, all this other stuff and I just kind of pushed him back and he punched me in the face. Shelby police were called but O'Grady left. Police ultimately ended up at his home with a warrant. The victim says O'Grady punched him not once but twice. He says he'd never met him in person and didn't know who he was. Only after realizing they'd sparred on social media over what candidates to support. It looked like from his face that he was so angry that he wanted to kill me. He wanted to keep, he was coming from my head. That's what he wanted. Back here alive, we've reached out to O'Grady this afternoon and evening via email and text. So far, there has been no response. And Devin Kimberly, I spoke to other people who attended this event. They said this whole thing was so strange that there was no drama, no trouble, no nothing. Everybody was, you know, having a good time. And then all of a sudden, this big commotion in the bar and, and someone throwing punches. We're live in Shelby Township tonight. I'm Mara McDonald. Local four. Yeah, everything fine until it wasn't. All right, Mara. Uh, speaking of political gatherings, former President Trump is heading back to Macomb County tomorrow. He'll be in Washington Township at a rally for two Republican candidates in Michigan, AG candidate Matt DiPerno and Secretary of State candidate Christina Caramo. It's President Trump's first trip back to Michigan since that campaign rally in Grand Rapids just before election 2020. Whether you're outside for a rally or uh, just some spring yard work, maybe you might encounter a little bit of yeah. rain this weekend. Paul is tracking our chances here for some wet weather. Paul? Yeah, we have kind of an interesting weekend ahead, and I'm getting a new model in right now. Hopefully it'll finish just before we get to our main weather segment in about uh, 10, 15 minutes, and we'll uh, see if there are any trends uh, that we can develop uh, for your weekend in terms of timing the rain. But right now, uh, we have temperatures in the 30s across the area, and I talk all the time about how clouds are a blanket and keep things from cooling off as quick. Well, areas that have seen the clearing come in have seen temperatures drop three or four degrees in one hour in some spots. So that's happening. But right now, most of us are in the 30s and the wind is lightening up big time. So wind chill is not an issue if you're heading out right now for any reason. Still have some clouds around, but this clearing is coming in very aggressively from the west. So we're going to see those clearing skies, which means we'll wake up with sunshine tomorrow. But that rain is going to develop. So we're going to break down that timing coming up Sunday. We're going to see. I'm waiting for that new model, but we'll see if there are any trends. Uh, it looked like a spotty shower possible, but really the more important thing this weekend, temperatures rebounding back into the upper 40s to near 50 degrees after 30s today. All right, don't forget the local forecasters app. Tomorrow, you'll really want to have this app. I know most of you do, but the real-time radar in the afternoon, if you're trying to get some yard work done or whatever, check the real-time radar. Track the progress of the rain. It's all there, right there. It's real easy, and you can pan and zoom with your fingers on that radar map, too, to see anywhere you want to see in the country or the world. It's free. Just go to the app store. Search under WDIV. Okay, Paul. A candlelight vigil tonight in East Point for the victims of a double homicide. It was one week ago, a 63-year-old woman and her 57-year-old brother were found dead inside a home in the 15,000 block of Veronica. They had been shot multiple times. Family members say nothing will ever be the same for them after what happened. My mom was the best mom. My uncle was the sweetest. They didn't desire to go like this. 
I will never be the same. My life will be ruined. Our life will be ruined forever. I will never understand this. Two people, a 30-year-old man and his father, were arrested in Ohio. Police say they believe this has, have, has to be a domestic incident, but they aren't yet offering any more details. A mother and child reunited after some terrifying moments this morning on Detroit's west side. The mother ran inside a salon to check on a loved one and left the car running with her baby in the car seat. A few seconds later, a thief jumped into the car and took off with the baby still inside. Now, thankfully, a good Samaritan saw it happen, followed the car and turned a corner and then saw the child left behind by whoever stole the car. And thank God that the people who seen that believe in God and care and know that that shit was wrong because he came running up the street with my baby. When you saw your baby, what was through your baby? I was so happy because I, I thought something had happened to my kid. I, I was just happy he okay. Three suspects are in custody, but the car is still missing. It's a blue 2019 Hyundai Accent with Michigan license plate number EGA 4759, 4759. If you see it, please call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-SPEAK-UP. The federal trial of four men accused of plotting to kidnap Governor Whitmer is now in the hands of the jury. Today, prosecutors and defense attorneys offered their closing arguments. Prosecutors said they've shown evidence Barry Croft, Adam Fox, Daniel Harris, and Brandon Caserta intended to kidnap the governor and even trained for it. Defense attorneys said FBI informants orchestrated everything and fueled the defendants' extremist views. The judge told the jurors they can consider the issue of entrapment, but there must be undisputed evidence that government agents induced the men to commit conspiracy. Chippewa Valley High School student is in jail tonight for allegedly bringing a gun to school. A student and a parent saw this photo posted on Snapchat this morning of a student sitting in a bathroom stall holding a gun. The school and police were notified immediately and the school was placed on a temporary lockdown. Fortunately, no one was hurt. Police arrested the student and they've recovered the gun. Detroit police need your help tonight in an arson investigation on the city's west side. Video shows a suspect pull up in a white Ford Flex, set a car on fire, and then take off. Nobody was hurt. Happened on March 18th, around 3 a.m. on Lawrence Street. Have any information on this crime? Call Detroit Police, their arson unit, or Crime Stoppers. That number is 1-800-SPEAK-UP. And tonight, a second suspect is in custody for a deadly shooting last month at a Marathon gas station in Warren. Police say 21-year-old Christopher Slade was arrested on Detroit's west side. He's been charged with felony murder. Another man has already turned himself in. Michigan's COVID numbers continue ticking up slightly. Today's data from the state showing more than 1,600 new cases in the past two days. Daily average 831, 53 cases a day higher than last Friday's average. Seven-day positivity rate, though, that looks steady, just above 3.5%. Next week, as we have told you, the state is dialing back the frequency of the reports from three times a week to once a week. It'll only be released on Wednesdays. Tonight, Russia is making a claim that could jeopardize peace talks with Ukraine. A governor says Ukraine launched a strike on a fuel depot in the city of Belgorod. It would be the first time Ukraine flew into Russia since the invasion started in February. Russia says two people were hurt. Meanwhile, the Red Cross says its mission to rescue civilians from Mariupol has failed. An emergency team tried to get into that city but had to turn back. They say they will try again tomorrow. At last check, more than 4 million people have left Ukraine.